what is the craziest like like hack or like something that you've done like this it shouldn't work or there's no way this is gonna work but actually did. I was building a mini bike and it had this old rust like blue paint job on it. I wanna take it off. And it took a bottle and an air gun that hooks up to your air compressor, so I filed a notch and a little tube coming out of the air gun. Uh -huh. And then drilled a hole through the neck of the bottle and filled it with sand where it would fill into there and you shoot air and it'd suck and blow and it worked? out there. And my dad's like, that's not going to work. Don't well, be when, filing let's holes let's talk my... about where you got the sand. I got the sand out of the ground. <laughs> <laughs> so, so dad's got potholes all over the driveway is what you're saying. <laughs> it worked. He sandblasted that whole mini bike frame down to bare metal with it. Just, wow. Just, Shovels full of sand out of the pasture. <laughs> Welcome back to In the Isles, presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts. I'm your host, Derek Theory from Vice Grip Garage YouTube. We have a full house today, some awesome guests. We've got Kent and Jack here from Speed Bump Garage, and my son Bentley from Little Grip Garage. Yep. Full house. Welcome to the show, guys. Yep. Thanks for having us. Yeah. How was the trip here? It, it was fun. A long trip. Yeah. Is it Oklahoma? Is that yep. where you're from? Yeah. East side, west side? Uh, northwest. Northwest, wow, that is a drive. What do you think of the Delina Country Store here? It's really cool. It's yeah. got some cool stuff in here. Yeah, so I just learned from the current owner, it's been a store for 132 years, and it's always been a store except for uh, 10 to 12 years, it was used as hay storage. <laughs> kind of weird, huh? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's got a lot of character. We might start hanging out in here a little bit. Do you like it? Yeah. Yeah, a little more room, too. Huh? Mm -hmm. Dad's shop is kind of cluttered, allegedly. <laughs> yeah, lots of stuff. So you guys have absolutely exploded, and I'm glad I got a hold of you and we got you in here because this is just incredible, and I'm so happy for you guys, and I just want to learn a little bit about you guys and and uh, what, what you want to do with this newfound fame and, yeah. and, and some of your projects. So... This started, you have some stuff on your YouTube, but it really started with the Ranchero, did it not? Yeah. What blew us up was the Ranchero for sure, but we've just always made videos working on cars. Yeah, you got, I saw you had a Jeep or something as well. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And uh, I think it was, uh, I don't know what they call it, a short. You did like a shorts or something, yeah. or maybe it was on Facebook, but I watched you guys go from tens of thousands to your, over a million followers now on tiktok yeah but wow that's cool <laughs> we started on tiktok we blew up on tiktok with that ranchero short and yeah. we ended up getting banned off of tiktok really they think it was bots or something because you're growing no, too fast <laughs> they they thought he was under 13 years old and oh, okay. i appealed it he's actually 14 um it, the appeal was denied so we were we were banned and the account was removed so then there's 20 fake speed bump garage accounts on TikTok oh, of course. now. And yeah. we recently fired back up on there with, I'm not super optimistic it'll be long lived, but yeah. we'll, uh, we're already making the videos, so cool. we're going to put them on there also. Obviously, you have fun doing that. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's cool. Well, that was one of your questions. He's 11, you're about to be 12, yes. right? So you're 14 now? Yep. Yeah. So how long have you been doing it? Um, I started my own channel, Growing Giant Pumpkins. That's how we actually started YouTube. And I started in... Posted the first video in January of 2020. 2020, yeah. For, uh -huh. And that's Grow Jack Outdoors is that channel. So Wow. Speed, so Speed Bump was actually our second channel, kind of our, just for our shop stuff. Sure. Okay. Well, you're a busy guy. You still doing both? Yep. Okay. Can we use it? I think Chad has a picture of you with a giant pumpkin. Can we yeah. use that picture? Is that yeah, right? for yeah. sure. Okay. We're going to show you guys this picture of this pumpkin. It's like, how big is this thing? It's the whole back of this truck. It weighed 396 pounds. <laughs> how, how do you grow that stuff? It's just a lot of seed genetics. Like, people have tweaked the seeds to where they grow giant pumpkins and a lot of fertilizer. Okay, so it's not by accident. It's by no. design. Yeah. Okay. Do you ever carve one that big? Um, We've had an expert carver guy that won like a Netflix series, carved one, and he carved it into like a elephant, I think. At some point, you'd have to get in the middle with a shovel. <laughs> yeah. So that, that one was just under 500 pounds. I can share a picture of you guys of it too. So it, it's, they, he carved it into an elephant, like a three-dimensional elephant. 
That's wild. It was really cool. How do you move them? Tractor? Yeah, yeah. I built a, a harness that hangs from the, my skid steer forks and basically you tie webbing under it and then pick it up and get it on a pallet. That's how mom gets me around after supper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty familiar. Well, that's really cool. So what year is the Ranchero? It's 1970 from the Venn decoder I found. Okay, that's a good year for pretty much every automobile make. I think yeah. Like 68 to 72 was a, it was a pretty cool era. Uh, what engine? It has a 302 in it. 302, yeah. And uh, from the one I watched, you had to put a lightning hose on there. You said that yep. was a little little Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, yeah. I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> and a uh, new battery, and that was about it, wasn't it? It fired right yeah, up? Yeah, I, I was surprised. The video almost looks fake, how easy it started up. Well, some of those are just that way. <laughs> yeah. Now, how long have you had it? So we had a 68 Ranchero on the channel that we did a revival on. And that 70 came with the 68 as a parts car. And sight unseen, I drove about 45 miles to go get the parts car, and I got over there, and it's a <laughs> totally different body style. Oh. And I, we, we took it home anyway and just kind of dumped it off in the past year. So that we've had it for probably two years. Okay. Um, never did anything with it. It's really rough. Oh, <laughs> perfect. Yeah. You're on like part nine or ten now or something, aren't you? I think we have like... Maybe 13 is what we're on. We published 14 yesterday, and Jack was doing donuts in it, and uh, the the social medias didn't like that. Well, you got to <laughs> learn at some point, right? Yeah. <laughs> You've done some, some burnouts. Yeah. Huh? yeah. So, uh, just wow. know the donuts are happening. We just can't show you yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. So it's running and driving. You just yeah. have to tune in, I guess, right? So what's your plans with this thing? Obviously, you can't let it go at this point, right? Yeah. It's, I need to rebuild the front suspension. Okay. It's bad. The ball joints, everything's messed up in the front. Somebody's jumped this car, and everything in the front's just all messed up. Sounds like I've worked on it, actually, then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah a lot of those older cars, they got the movie. I call it the movie steering wheel, where you do yeah. this, but it doesn't really do anything. <laughs> yeah. You know? That's what you're truck does, isn't it? Yeah. But the newer one's not so bad. No, my old one is pretty bad. Yeah, the C10. Well, I think the whole column's broke out of it, actually. <laughs> but when, when I picked that car up, it didn't have back wheels on it, and it had a high lift jack in the bedside holding it up from the wheel wheel. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, that's funny. So if you don't mind me asking, what do you do for a living? Uh, I work at a chemical plant. Okay. Full time and then maintenance. So you're just like tinkering after work, weekends, stuff like that? Yeah. So Jack had the big idea of the Grow Jack YouTube channel. So that kind of forced us to learn how to edit and run a YouTube channel. And yeah. we've always had the shop working on cars. It's always been a big passion of mine. Okay. So we, uh, once we figured everything out on the Grow Jack side, we decided just to make the Speed Bump Garage channel. And now it's obviously past the Grow Jack channel by quite a bit because of this Ranchero series. Right. You put a little fertilizer on the Speed Bump channel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <for> sure. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So, do you guys watch Vice Grip Garage at yep, all? Yeah, a lot. Yeah, yep. cool. Awesome. I thought maybe there was a little influence there, and I'm just, I'm, I'm so happy and proud of you guys. <laughs> yeah, there that. definitely is. Yeah, cool. Um, do you have a favorite episode? Um, I like the independence. Independence, videos. yeah. That's that's. A f I'm trying to think if I've ever done a ranchero. I don't think you have. You've had like a. Have you did the El Camino? Yeah, that was the El a Camino. Really popular video. The El Camino, yeah. I liked when you came back in the El Camino. Yeah. That was a fun video. Yeah, that's a whole bed full of junk that I bought on the way home. <laughs> yeah. Didn't you buy a motorcycle? I on did. The way there? I did. <laughs> well, you can't go home with an empty <laughs> truck bed, right? That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you know the history of the Ranchero? Um, I don't. El Camino was in response to the Ranchero, and they started panicking a little bit and had to come <laughs> up with something cool, but they're pretty short-lived. They weren't around for a long time. Um, Do you like the look of them? Yeah, I like the look of the older ones. I like the real old ones. What's our neighbor's ear? We have a neighbor with a really sharp, like, 57, 58 Ranchero, and it's just Wings on the sharp. Yeah. It's a... It's a cobalt blue. It almost looks purple. It's a beautiful car. Oh wow! Is that are you gonna paint yours eventually? Um, I don't know. It just depends. Yeah. 
Do you call it a car or a truck? I don't know. I did a short about that. It has a car wheel pattern or stud pattern. Yeah. So. What's the I, title say? I, it doesn't have a title. title. It doesn't have a title. <laughs> what does the napkin say? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a truck. You can haul a bunch of stuff in the back. So. Yeah. I mean, that's where I'm at. Like, you can't haul the yard of gravel on the trunk of a car. Or yeah. Or a motorcycle. We, or, we did fire up the Australian following, tons of comments calling it a ute, ute. and yeah. they were they were really passionate about it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking hundreds of comments from them. I can see it being a practical vehicle, but to them I think it was just everyday, that's just normal. Yeah, yeah. and they, yeah. they still there. have them. Yeah. They, I think Holden makes several utes for them still. Yeah, uh, basically a GTO, right? But what but what's the bet? Actually, I'm seeing a lot of conversions these days, people taking chargers and GTOs and yeah. turning them into, you know, mullet yeah. cars. Yeah. Jack was just showing me a Volkswagen Beetle, which we have a few Volkswagens too, that was converted to one, like a classic air-cooled Beetle, and it just looked killer. And mm. I'd like to maybe do one of those one of these days. That's a small payload. Yeah. Haul <laughs> <laughs> some Tonka trucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So what's your fa what is your favorite car? Is it a Ranchero or? I'd like to have a 70, 71 Chevelle. Yeah, good choice. <laughs> what's your favorite car? Probably a C10. C10 truck, yeah. not picky on your mm -mm. color? Mainly in the 60s. 60s, yeah. floorboards? Yeah. Okay, I thought you'd say optional. <laughs> Mine doesn't really have any. <laughs> <laughs> what's yours, Derek? I see you ask a lot of people that question. And it, it changes so often, probably weekly. I'm like, ooh, I got to have this car and yeah. then I'll get it. And I was like, eh. And then I, you know. But for me, it's just anything that has style and character or charisma or even the story. I've, I've purchased cars solely based on their history. Yeah, for sure. And I just love reminiscing in that and understanding it and stuff. But um, I'm blessed to say I think I probably have my... My most favorite, which was my dad's Buick and mm -hmm. and uh, '69 Camaro. Yeah. And I'm I'm happy. I'm blessed. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. I'm not much into you know. There's a lot of creators that are like, oh, I want to have a Ferrari Enzo or a, yeah. You know, I don't need that. Give me an old trucker car. The older Ferraris are kind of cool, but. Yeah, yeah. Before they were all plastic. Yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. I do have, and I've never admitted this before ever. Um, a fixation with Panteras. Really? Those are? Yeah. Those, but those have gotten <coughs> quite pricey. They are now, you know, a quarter million dollars. Yeah. I'll never own one. <laughs> have like, you ever sit in one? No. I'm sure I won't fit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure I won't fit. Because I've, I've owned a Bricklin. Yeah. I've worked on and driven a DeLorean. They're all the same, and I don't fit in any of those. Yeah. How high did my head stick out of the DeLorean? <laughs> yeah. So I had to drive with the doors up. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so I'll just get a poster of one of those, I think. So do you like Chevelles too, or? Um, I d actually, when Jack was born, I had a 72 Chevelle, and he, uh, we painted it uh, a Chrysler color, actually. It was called Electric Lime Green, and mm. it was a really nice car, and, but my, the cars that I really love would be like late 50s. I'd love to have a 59 Buick. Like yeah. Two door hard top. Oh, nice. Yep. Yeah. The the fifty five to probably sixty Buicks are my favorite. I think they really. Yeah. I mean the styling. Every, everything that whole era through sixty three, sixty four, I I love. It, yep. Yeah. It's funny to see like how much Buick uh, influenced other brands. Yeah. You know, with styling and wing windows and air conditioning and power brakes for and, sure and automatic transmission and you know all of that stuff right yeah. so i think they're probably my overall favorite make chevrolet must be yours i take it yeah, yeah. i like just anything that looks cool i don't care what makes it yeah really well, that's cool uh what kind of go-kart you got um it's what what is it's ours? A Mur murray murray it's got like a roll bar or something yeah right? Yeah. It kind of looks like mine. What brand is yours? I think it was like a, I think it was like called just the Cruiser or something. Uh, or. Sears and Roebuck or something. Yeah, something yeah. weird. 
It says something like cruiser on it too. It, Maybe it's the same thing. Could be. Yeah. Look really similar. Sim yeah. What kind of engine you got on the thing? It's got a, uh, is it 15 horsepower? I don't know. I messed with it one time and we never got it running reliably. We. It's a six horse Tecumseh. We, oh, Tecumseh, sweet, yeah. We took it out and the throttle's just sticking and Dad is on the back of it hanging on to the roll cage. <laughs> That's your braking system? <laughs> yeah. Dragon. Wasn't it doing like wheelies? Yeah, it started wheeling with him on the back of it. Oh, wow. Because the throttle was sticking. Yeah, yours is in a million pieces. <laughs> yeah, there's pieces of it everywhere. You're trying, what are you trying to do to yours? I'm trying to build like a burnout cart. We have yeah. this like, I think it's like a 15 or 16 horse Predator, but it's way too big for th that go kart. So we have to find like, whole bunch of weird parts for it to get it to work. But hopefully it'll be like a good burnout cart yeah. for events or something. And cut it in half. Yeah. Basically your dad is procrastinating. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's just, let's just put that on paper. Well, what are your plans now with the channel? Are you gonna continue to do car stuff now that you're, you're getting the age? Yeah. You're gonna have a learner's permit pretty yeah. soon. Okay, so you're gonna get out of the go-kart stuff or are you gonna kind of do everything? I'm gonna just try to do everything. That's cool. Do you have any motorcycles? I have a dirt bike, yeah. Okay, snow machine? No. Snow blower? No, okay. Well, you get snow in Oklahoma, don't, don't you? get that much snow, maybe once, twice a year. Oh, that ain't bad. Northwest. I would have figured you guys get way more than that up there. We we usually get one or two big snows a year, but it's there's not snow doesn't stay on the ground. It, it doesn't stick around long. Okay, so you don't get to do much sledding or any of that stuff. No, every once in a while we pull off a hood of our old car and pull it around. That's the way to do it, right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So how has school changed for you with with the popularity? No. Well, that's good, I guess, yeah. right? Yeah. It's basically it's still the same, but yeah, not a lot of high fives and uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's cool. Um, are you guys going to start doing any shows or like uh, like car shows or events or? Jack really wants to do the power tour, and oh, uh, cool. We've yeah. talked about it. We wanted to do it this last summer, but my uh, my day job interfered. We couldn't make it, so. Possibly next summer, try to get something on the power tube. Ranchero, right? Yeah, yeah I don't maybe. know. <laughs> yeah. Get that front end fixed up a little bit. Yeah. Power tour is incredibly fun. It's just like, it's so fun to be engulfed in so many people that live the same culture and, yeah. and just enjoy the same things. And you really don't have to worry about breaking down, I've learned from experience breaking down. <laughs> because if you don't have the part, Somebody, Somebody else, else does, or yeah. they'll help you, you know, get it. So, if you could do the power tour, I'd, I'd absolutely uh, recommend that one for sure. Plus, um, I missed it this year, but cruising the coast. Yeah, that's that's right now. I've, yeah. I've always thought that show looked pretty awesome, but we've never made it down there either. Less driving, but I think it's as big, or I don't know. We don't have a fact checker. <laughs> Any other events? You're gonna get into any uh, racing eventually, like drag week or any of that stuff? I'd like to do that, yeah. yeah. Maybe I shouldn't influence you. Is that okay with you? <laughs> yeah. Drag well, stuff? <laughs> we have a car we wanna build a drag car out of. Cool. So. Yeah. There's a, there are some father-son teams. There's this team, he was too young to drive when they started doing Dragon drives, but I think he just took over this year. Really, driving, and it's been so cool watching. Yeah. And now he knows that car, in and out. He just tells his dad to sit back and get out of the way, and he does <laughs> all the work and races it and stuff. So that's pretty cool. What's your favorite hobby, like off camera? Is it like video games, just riding dirt bikes. Uh, I like it's just driving things. I like, and then g growing giant pumpkins. It's, how many do you grow? I grew two this year. Okay. How long do they take to grow, like fully? I usually start my seeds in March and end in around October or September. You know, Bradley would be so excited yeah. right now. His brother is a outdoorsman. Yeah. Has a big garden and does peppers. And I think he tried to do pumpkins, but failed miserably. Yeah, like I everything. I also ran one over with a lawnmower, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
I think that was his cantaloupe. Oh, okay. What were you saying? Uh, well, he, like, he grows stuff, but he doesn't fertilize it, right, or something. So, like, everything grows mini. He's grown, like, a lemon smaller than a dime. And, like, <laughs> it's, like, his peppers are, like, it's all weird, but at the same time, it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Maybe he's got the miniature seeds and not the, the giant <laughs> yeah. seeds. Yeah. Yeah. He should get into watermelons. This this part of the country you could grow watermelons? some big watermelons. He's trying to do do like the little sugar watermelons or whatever. Yeah. I don't I don't think they turned out good though. I never ate one. I don't know if they ever made it. Yeah, I don't think they did. Yeah. <clears throat> he was into potatoes for some reason. It was so random. But all of a sudden we had <laughs> buckets of potatoes all over the property. You couldn't go <laughs> anywhere without a bucket full of potatoes. Yeah, there, I think there was like eight or ten of them. Yes. Just full. Time for a potato gun. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, did you see that we got yeah, one? Yeah, you just got one a few yeah. days ago. I'm trying to hide it from you guys, but you already found it, I guess. <laughs> so that's good. But, well, that's a good question. I mean, that's pretty much what you do is you just try to drive anything and everything. Yeah. you got to learn at some point. So. Yeah. yeah. What kind of motorcycle you got? I got a Kawasaki 65. Okay. Is it a two-stroke? Yeah. Sweet. Uh, two strokes are, have really gone to the wayside. Yeah. Do you mix all your own fuel and stuff? Uh, sometimes Dad does most of it. Though. Yeah, it, it gets confusing at yeah. some points. <laughs> have you ever re-ringed it yet or anything? Um, no. What year is that? Uh, I think it's two thousand nine. Yeah. Does that sounds right. Oh, it's pretty snazzy unit. My first one was a seventy four Yamaha, eighty. Two stroke. And I rode the wheels off that thing. I basically had to ring it every fall because it was <laughs> done, which you just found out on the golf cart. Yeah. He, uh, he's got an old Yamaha golf cart, and he's put so many miles on that thing, it just would not even move yeah. anymore. Yeah. You should get something like that for hauling all your equipment around. Yeah. That would be pretty handy. I have an old Kawasaki mule, too, and it's just... The clutch is going down, and it, it, you got to floor it, and the clutch is sitting there and spin, and you'll be going like two mile an hour. <laughs> it, it's also wore out. Yeah. He, he has also worn it out. Yeah, that's just the speed governor. That's all it that is. <laughs> cool. So, do you have any plans? Like, do you, what do you want to be when you grow up? Are you going to be a mechanic, or do you have some other big dreams? I don't know. I'd like to be an engineer. Oh, wow. Okay. Make YouTube videos. Yeah. It sounds like you're engineering-ish. Um, sort of. I, I'm not. I'm in maintenance at a chemical plant, okay. so I work closely with the engineers, but I'm not actually an engineer. But you're working with your hands, figuring stuff out every day. You're the go-to guy. It sounds like. Yeah, so. well, I'm not on tools anymore. I'm a maintenance planner, but I plan. Okay. The jobs. Yeah, and you've obviously followed by his by his hip yeah. and, and learned a lot. Yeah, that's really cool. So. Where do you do you have anything else like where is this gonna take you you think is there anything big that you want to do with your channel or uh, I don't know I'd like to be able to go to some of the Cletus and Cars events we could probably make that happen soon I'd like to do that be, make a burnout car or something there you go that'd be fun Indy would be pretty close to you guys I think right yeah. it's still pretty long haul but. Closer than Florida. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's a fun group of people, too. It's just like power tour. You know, you yeah. can pretty much uh, just hang out with like-minded folks and have a lot of fun. I think there might... Is there an age restriction, though? Uh, I think there... I'm not sure. I think there might be. Or you can go to duct tape drags next year and I'll sneak you in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we need to research that, the, the Cletus age limit for... Burnout cars. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure if they have one or not. I'm assuming they probably do. They might, but we'll just like paint a mustache on it <laughs> yeah. or something. We'll put a pillow under the on the seat, and get you up in the seat a little we, bit. We've been scheming on that. I don't, we don't know with the with YouTube not liking him driving. We're gonna have to make some sort of disguise. I'm surprised that you guys get. I don't think we've ever really gotten any mm -mm. stuff. Is it? Are you on your property? I assume. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Which he's, so he's been driving the mule on YouTube since he was 10. But uh, just recently with the channel growth, we've got two episodes flagged with him sitting in the driver's seat. So 
The best advice I can give you about YouTube is never read the comments. Just yeah. do yeah. you, do what you want to do, have fun, have fun doing it. Keep your head to the head to the grindstone and just, psh, just yeah. keep on going. Yeah. It's tough not to though when there's, yeah. there's so much activity and stuff like that. We have I do try to keep him out of the comments and it's you know, they're ninety percent positive, but it's hard not to dwell on that ten percent so that you're that's good advice to just stay out of them. Yeah, I mean it's it, you know it's life and it doesn't matter if it's YouTube or you know, say you owned your own construction company or whatever, you can't please everybody. It's, yeah. it's impossible. And I've, I've been there when I first started out too because you're working so hard and you're trying so hard and you want to make everybody happy and you want yeah. people to enjoy your hard work. And there's always someone that doesn't. And it, at first it stings, but you just have to realize not everyone likes the color red, right? <laughs> yeah. They yeah. might prefer blue. So it's just... You just got to forget all that stuff and just keep on having fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you ever get negative stuff? I don't really look at my comments. I don't know that I let you, really. I don't even know how to get on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, with, the, with the channel growth, so ahead of, before we did the Ranchero series, uh, Speed Bump Garage was at 12,000 subscribers and Grow Jack Outdoors was at 25,000. So we were in a place where I could almost reply to every comment. Mm -hmm. And I, we, I set aside time constantly to engage. And overnight, obviously that's not possible now. And Right, drinking from a fire hose. Yeah, basically. It's, it, it's something that we used to set aside time to do, but now it's just not feasible. There's way too many. It's, it's really tough, obviously. And... And I think your time is better spent just focusing on your next project and, yeah. Yeah, and doing that stuff. You're going to go try to find a Chevelle now, or are you going to keep working on the ranch show first? I'd like to just try to find a Chevelle in the extra time I have and still work on the ranch arrow. At least get it in the pasture, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, get it ready. That's my problem is I'll say it runs, and then I go by the next one, but I'm not done with the first one, and it turns into this big. We have that same problem. <laughs> we, we have a 68 Buick Skylark that was, my great-grandmother bought it new, and it was my brother's car in high school. We redid it when we were kids, and then my brother actually gave it to Jack several years ago. Oh, wow. So ahead of a Chevelle, he may be in a Buick. Okay. So we're, That's a cool car, though, too. Yeah. Yeah, the front ends are beautiful on those. Yeah. It's uh, so the the property that we live on was my great grandparents' <laughs> property, and so the car's been on the property since '68. Wow. That's it's never left. Well, it left for a few years when my brother drove it in high school, and then it, it found its way back. What's uh, the, what's the engine on that? Uh. <laughs> well, it has a Buick 350 in it, but it has a uh, hole a big hole in the side of the block. We. Oh. We were doing a burnout contest and sent it a little too hard. <laughs> <laughs> Extra window on the box. Yeah. Yeah. Those Buick rods, they're tiny. They're yeah, and their Buicks are pretty notorious for being low revving yeah. engines. We, we went a little too a little too far on it. That's right. Now you know the limit. Yeah. 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 We went back down just a little bit. So I, we have another Buick. Well, a Saber, I think, like a 71 with a 354 barrel. Okay. So we might put that engine in it, or I'd really like to find the Buick 455 to put in it. So. They are torque monsters. Yeah. yeah. You don't got to sling those very hard to, to make some power, spin some tires. That's what was in that Riviera yeah. 455. I used to swap those in the C10s. Really? Yeah. They make really good uh, for towing and stuff like that, if you can keep them. Keep it I, cool. I see quite a few in our part of the country with Oldsmobiles in them, with the 455 Olds. Mm-hmm. We just did a, was it, what, wasn't it an Olds 455 in that Firebird? Yeah, we did a Firebird that <coughs> we got surprised had an Olds 455 yeah. crudely cut and just slammed into this thing. But So growing up, my stepdad was a mechanic and, uh, mechanic to the point to where he really didn't want cars as a hobby but he loved jet boats oh, okay and he his jet boat well, he still has it had a 455 oldsmobile in it and 
nitrous and all the all the good stuff. Wow. So Have you written on that? Uh, I haven't written on that one. Yeah? You want to write on it? Yeah. <laughs> he, he wrote in a different one that my former stepbrother owns, and it, it had a big block Chevy in it. Nice. Is that fun to you? Yeah. You boats? Isn't it funny how even though you're going slower, it feels like you're going faster on yeah. the water? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, our yeah. boat goes like 14, no, yeah. 9, I think. Yeah, something like that. So we have to pretend to be excited. <laughs> but yeah, 80, 80 mile an hour on the water feels Oh, it feels like you're way going fast. Buck 20. Yeah. yeah. Would you ever build a jet boat? Yeah, I would. Me too. Someday. I'll put it on the list of someday. Jack has wanted to build one of those mini jet boats for a long time, like Cletus's and oh, the, yeah. the little aluminum what they, ones. What do they call those? I don't know. What they're the jet like. streams. Yeah, I think it's something is like it a that. Jet stream? Yeah, that's what that's the body kit that they buy. Okay, when I mean, you have to weld the whole thing yeah, together. Yeah, it's right? a lot of welding and work. Oof, mine yep. would sink pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of aluminum welding. Yeah, it's too bad they don't come as like a shell. I think you can you buy can one buy single, them. but they're really expensive. Really expensive. And then the supercharged jet ski engines. That sounds super cheap. Expensive. Yeah. yeah. Especially now that everybody wants to build them, the markets. Oh, I suppose. High. Could you not just put a Predator in that for a little while? Probably could. Probably wouldn't be fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. <laughs> predators are really... I feel like Predators are better for torque than speed. Yeah, I suppose. The takeoff is really good, but then the top speed is not really good on any of them. They just don't have enough horsepower and RPM. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think, what if you took like a... <coughs> like a Yugo motor, three-cylinder Yugo motor? I th Small and compact. Yeah, I think if you bought a pump that would handle it for the for the drive, it'd probably work. Hmm. Hmm. Those would be pretty cool. You could even have a swap one. I'm sure someone probably has. I don't think it's a swap at that point, though. It just it is it is an LS. <laughs> right, you're riding an LS. There, we were at a friend's house, <clears throat> and um, he was showing me his fancy boat, and we were. I don't know what you call it, unhooking the boat into the waters or whatever the process is. And I, I hear this like, it sounded like a funny car. And I look over and it's like an 80s jet ski with an LS in it and a turbo hanging out of the back. Really? And the seat is like, looked like this, whatever the computer box this thing is. Like that was the seat. And this kid had a little helmet on and a GoPro. <laughs> I'm like, I would. That's got to be on YouTube somewhere. I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. And he took off like crazy. But I couldn't imagine having that much speed on something that small on yeah. water. I don't know how you float it in a jet ski. You'd think it'd be top heavy. I have no idea. Not a clue. Do you do any outdoor? Well, obviously, you, you grow pumpkins and stuff. But do you fish or hunt? Yeah, or? I hunt and fish. Yeah. I do some of that on my other channel, too. OK. Do you live by a lake or a stream or something like that? or No, we've always just went around to ponds, and then we're not that far away from two lakes. Okay, well, that's handy. Um, we sometimes, we don't get a lot of time to go fishing, do we? Yeah. When we first bought our boat, we went kind of often, but I don't think we're going again until next summer. Season's done, I think. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, funny story about fishing. Uh, one of my other boys, Bailey, is not not a huge fisherman. He's just getting into it. Yeah. And uh, we were so busy, and he's helping Bradley, who's an avid avid fisher boy, fisher kid. <laughs> Fisherman sounds weird. He's pretty young. But anyway, so my attention was there. So I just put a lure on that. It was like a crankbait, and we're we're in catfish country, so it's not going to yeah. work, right? And. He's back there for, how long was he back there fighting that fish before he said something? Probably like seven minutes. And he's rustling and all this stuff. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I think I might have a fish. <laughs> he reels in this, how big was that catfish? It was huge. It was this massive catfish. It was at least like 15 pounds. Uh, massive. Yeah. This was on your property? It, no, it's north of our property a little bit. But, um. It was just funny that he wasn't even really trying to put the wrong, <laughs> in, wrong lure on. He ended up with one. He rails in a whopper of the day. <laughs> I think he's the only one that's caught a fish. 
since we bought our boat. Probably. You had one, like a huge catfish, too, when we were going, like, night fishing. Yeah. He lost it, though. He had, like, only, like, 10-pound line. It my fault. snapped, yeah. Why? Well, I, I spend most of my time making the boat run and float, <laughs> yeah. so I don't, I don't get to fish that much. But. Yeah. Well, that's cool. What kind of hunting do you do? Uh, just turkey and deer, mostly. Yeah? You can throw a shotgun around then? Yeah. Sweet. That's pretty cool. Um, you haven't done any hunting yet, have you? No, I don't like to kill things. Yeah, not even ants? Spiders? I kill spiders and ants. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so your channel's been going for like two years. You've been, obviously you've been wrenching longer than that. Yeah. So when did you really start turning wrenches or holding the flashlight for dad and doing all that? It's been a long time. Like, he has a picture of me sitting in the Buick Skylark hood okay. when we were rebuilding it. So a long, long time. Yeah. Dad, what would you say? Ten? Eight? So it's kind of evolved. I Obviously, wrenching's always been in my downtime from my day job. And his mother's a nurse. So on the weekends that she was working, you know, even from toddler age, we were in the shop. And okay. it has evolved from me watching him in the shop and kind of, slowing me down a little bit to now it really slows me down when he's not there because <laughs> it has evolved to where he's he's a hand in the shop now well that's awesome so i i would say at least at least 10 years since he's been somewhat helpful in the shop wow it sounds like you can leverage him for some ice cream or something. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely can what's your favorite tool do you have a favorite tool in the shop i use a little Milwaukee electric ratchet a lot. Those are handy, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Yeah. I thought you were going to say the jack. <laughs> Use a jack a lot too, obviously. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I carry a Leatherman. That's my hammer. That's my pry bar. That's my knife. Yeah. Plier. All that stuff. <laughs> and I lose them a lot too, don't I? Yeah. Yeah. Now they're just all over the place. That and a hammer and a vice grip, obviously. <laughs> oh, here's one. Do you have a favorite car movie? What's that one you had me watch the other day? Oh, he, he recently watched American Graffiti. Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah, pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Have you ever seen, like, um, Two Lane Blacktop? No. Okay, that's another one. You got you to jot that one down, too. Um, but American Graffiti is pretty cool. There's a lot yeah. of lot of um, timeless classics in that thing. Yeah. That, that, sure. that era of automobile, just like the cruising, and the, it, it doesn't get much better than that, in my opinion. So. Yeah. That was going to be my next question, is if you have a favorite era. You love the 70s, 72 Chevelles, but do you like the 30s cars, like pre-war yeah, and I stuff? Yeah, I do like the 30s yeah. cars. Yeah. The nice thing about that era is you don't have to be so focused on going fast, as it is, like you yeah. say, just the style and cruising and, yeah. and having fun and stuff like that. What do you think the ugliest car is? Maybe well, like an old car, new car? At the airport yesterday, I saw a Honda Ridgeline. <laughs> at, the, at the rental, and it, it's like, oh. I think we've had a Ridgeline before. That's a that's a minivan Ute. <laughs> yeah, there you go. We get, I think we've had a Ridgeline, and um, Aztecs, Pontiac Aztecs. You ever seen one of those? Uh, I've probably seen one, but I've never heard Be of thankful it. if you, you don't remember it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know That's the what. peak of Pontiac's automotive design. <sighs> I don't know <laughs> what happened there. This is more, this is more of a uh, adult question, but obviously, you've got to also have a go-to beverage in the shop. Is it soda pops? Is it what are you drinking? Gatorade, water, Coke, Cokes. Yeah. yeah. Now down south, a Coke can be Sprite, Mountain Dew, Dr Pepper, or is it Coke like Coca Cola? Coca Cola. Okay. What's your go-to? Root beer. Root beer. Oh, I, I like root beer too. Yeah, he's a root beer guy. Remember Route 66? Yes. We drank probably, we're going to get in trouble. Sorry, <laughs> Mom. Uh, we drank probably, what, five to eight root beers a day or more? Probably. We went to this, like, I think it was, like, wasn't it, like, the world's biggest soda store? The Pops. They was had, Pops like. Pops in Oklahoma? Yeah, Pops. <laughs> they had, like, mustard soda or ranch soda. Yeah, there's, some, there's some in there I don't think would be yeah. very good. I think oh. we got, like. Eight cases of just different flavor root beer. There's like old fashioned, like, I don't know. Didn't There's I have a, a dill pickle one? I think you did. Then Something we went like right that. Right into the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Have 
have you ever had a project yet that, and I have them all the time, he has them, you might have had one, where you start it and you get frustrated or tired of it or just sick of it and you walk away and you say enough of it. Right? All the time. Yeah? Yeah. What's your recent one? The, the go-kart. The go-kart? Yeah. yeah. So the, the deal with the Ranchero series, it was he gets a free car if he makes it run. The Ranchero was not the first attempt. Okay, all right. There's, there's a long form <laughs> video on a 64 Mercury Comet four door. Just a lot, too much work. Huh? So there, I couldn't, the starter was worn out and it's all in flats, it's real close. I couldn't get under it, so I didn't uh, want to pull the starter, so I just quit. There you go. It, it will return to the channel, but the. Well, it looks like y'all got a lift in your shop. Yeah, right? I, need, I need to drag it in under the lift. Yeah, you got to get that Kawasaki mule to work. And drag, <laughs> drag that thing in there. What is the craziest, like, like hack or like something that you've done, like this, it shouldn't work or there's no way this is gonna work, but actually did. Like do you have any zip tie stories or duct tape? There's, I wanted to sandblast something. I don't remember what I wanted to sandblast, but. It's your mini bike. It's my mini bike frame. I was building a mini bike and it had this old rust, like blue paint job on it. I want to take it off. And I saw this video and I didn't think it was real. They took a bottle and I, air gun that hooks up to your air compressor. So I filed a notch and a little tube coming out of the air gun uh -huh. and then drilled a hole through the neck of the bottle and filled it with sand where it would fill into there and you shoot air and it suck and blow and it works. out there. And my dad's like, that's not gonna work. Don't well, be when, filing let's holes let's talk my... about where you got the sand. I got the sand out of the ground. <laughs> <laughs> So, so dad's got potholes all over the driveway, is what you're saying. <laughs> it worked. He sandblasted that whole mini bike frame down to bare metal with it. Just, wow. Just shovels full of sand out of the pasture. <laughs> How long did it last? It still works. No, I mean like the bottle. Like, is it like a minute or like 30 oh, seconds? Like or? Probably three minutes and then well, I... That's pretty good. I well, wasn't expecting it to work and I go out there and I'm like, hey, we got to get a respirator on or something. I didn't expect you to actually be out here sandblasting. <laughs> yeah. You're going to have to remember that one. Yeah. You had the hand, you hand sanded your frame, didn't you? Yeah. Oops. I've got a, a the cheapest sandblasting kit from a store I won't mention, but all of you know which one it is. <coughs> and it plugs every... Yeah. Was that the old one you had in Wisconsin? Well, I, I, I bought it again because I thought the first one was defective, but no. Maybe, still... maybe you can j should just try dirt out no, of the pasture. Right, now I just <laughs> will go dig holes up by the cows and then yeah. do the bottle trick, I guess. We, um, we have one, but we left, we left the top open and you have concrete it, now? It, it filled with mice. Oh, <laughs> so mice don't sandblast very good. No. <laughs> Yeah, I have, I have a, a hack that we did when Jack was a, a baby. We had a 30 Model A coupe and it was, this was 2009, so kind of the height of the rat rod era. Everybody's building low slung Model A's and this car was on air ride. The chassis was pretty much inside the car. Oh wow. And I wanted the bomber aluminum seats. You know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about, the old, yep. I couldn't afford them. And I found some old bar stools, like high back bar stools, vintage ones. And we, we ended up welding those down to the floor of the car. Oh, that's And secure. they worked perfect. <laughs> and then on top of that, we ratchet strapped Jack's car seat to the bar <laughs> stool. <laughs> and we made a lot of miles in the old Model A with Jack ratchet strapped into the, <laughs> into the, Molly. Yeah. Hey, that's how monster trucks work, I found <laughs> out. You just sit down and they just ratchet you in and away you go. Really? Yeah. So you were sitting on the, the floor pan, essentially, and yeah. then just the back was welded to the floor, right? Mm. Well, now the, the four legs, the, so it had, each side of the chair had four legs coming down. We sawed the legs off, set them okay. flat down on the car floor. Gotcha. Had to have room to get the ratchet strap under it. Right. <laughs> Hey, it's not a dumb idea if it works, right? <laughs> and I never did, I never did buy a set of bomber seats for that car. I ended up selling it, and it went to Japan. Oh wow! So that's wild. 
I sold a car, a couple, few cars over line, or over line, over, over the, on the line overseas. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of a process to get yeah. all the paperwork and, and all that stuff. But we, we sold a 59 Apache Chevy truck. Went overseas? Yeah, to Australia. Yeah. Those guys are, they don't mess around. They want something. They're buying it. Yeah, it was, I hate it. So it was actually the first vehicle on Speed Bump Garage. It was a 58 Apache long bed, step side. <clears throat> and we thought it was going to be easy revival. We got it in the shop and it was locked up really oh. bad. Yeah. So we did an in-frame kind of overhaul on it. And we never pulled the engine out of it. And put it back together the channel kind of started picking up right off the bat with that truck and I listed it for sale because I I didn't have money to keep the channel moving really so we're just trying to keep projects moving yeah and uh, the guy from Australia messaged me on Instagram offered me a little bit more than what we were asking and he just awesome guy I still talk to him all the time he's always sending me pictures of the oh that's cool of the truck down yeah. under so it we That's still cool. see it, and uh, maybe we'll get down there yeah. sometime to do it again. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the way a lot of these channels, I mean, that's how mine started, too. You, you get done with the project, you had to sell it yeah, that's, that's to where get we to were. the next one, right? Yeah. And it's just... We actually sold the 68 Ranchero already that his car came with. Oh, okay. So we, we did a kind of a, spruced it up a little bit, sold it, and... Got to have parts money. Fortunately, I didn't haul the 70 to the scrapyard like I wanted to, but. <laughs> <laughs> so, you've been to O'Reilly Auto Parts, right? Yeah. What's your favorite aisle on O'Reilly Auto Parts? The performance aisle. Boom. Nice. What's your favorite aisle? So, I, I, we haven't said this yet, but I used to be an O'Reilly's parts specialist. Really? I was, all through high school. Oh, wow. And, obviously, the performance aisles the place to go but i will say i would so i was in high school i worked nights and weekends i i dealt with the do-it-yourselfers and the the yep. hobbyists yep the dorman help section is the best place at o'reilly's did you write this down this morning i gave him a lot of <laughs> I, i'm talking no, it's true though. I mean, if, they, if they've you got don't all, look the, at all the different clips, yeah, switches, knobs, do dabs. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah, every time I go down that aisle, I see something. Hey, I didn't know they had this and universal stuff. That the, the performance aisles are obviously the cool answer, but yeah, that dormant help section, yeah, no, it's uh, the, the, the help yourself wall, I call it. That's, yeah. that's there's pretty much about everything there. We played a little game yesterday where we were putting parts in a box and we had the guess by feel. It's crazy all the stuff they have to steering shafts and door handles and what was the one that looked like a flute, but it was a thermostat housing. Oh, it was a <laughs> thermostat housing. It, was plate. it looked like Dr. Seuss stuff, but yeah, it was pretty wild. And HVAC control. Anyway, I'm just. It's I'm, all there. I'm nerding out right now. What's your favorite aisle? Uh. You're going to say the paint, aren't you? Uh, yeah, I was just going to say probably spray paint out. Yeah. I like spray painting things. Yeah, the boys are into this thing right now. It doesn't matter what it is. They've got to go. Sp My yard looks like, I don't even understand. It, it's like the largest art gallery made out of colored grass. <laughs> <laughs> Jack got a 3D printer for for his birthday last year. Ooh. Or this year, I guess. And he's he's been spray painting a lot of... 3D printed creations. What are you making in that thing? Uh, I made a Iron Man helmet that opens and closes. Really? With a button. But I went to spray paint it and I left it outside to dry and the plastic melted the form. So I'm working on another one, putting like RC servos in it where wow. the mask opens. That's pretty cool. That was another thing that was in line with his homemade sandblaster that he... So he's got two pieces on the Iron Man helmet, and it not only has the hinge open, it's got to slide up. He's like, yeah. how am I going to make this work? He's like, I don't know. It's plastic. I don't know what to do with it. And I, 
he figured it out with some servos and he plastic welded motor mount brackets inside of it. And it much awesome. to my surprise, worked. <laughs> That's awesome. So you just got to do it again, right? Yeah. That's cool. He's into glue sticks and shrink wrap and all that stuff. How are you plastic welding? The actual plastic welder device thingy? It's just a soldering gun. Yeah, melt it together. Yeah. That's what I do. Did you know you can use the zip ties as material with your solder? No. There you go. There goes all my zip ties. <laughs> <laughs> what were you using for filler? Or were you just, just melting the, them together? The 3D printer um, com comes with filament to where it comes in spools where it feeds it into the I just cut a big strand of that off. Oh, okay. looks like welding wire. Kind of. Oh, nice. You're, you're taking with plastic, yeah. basically. Yeah. Well, that's pretty funny. Well, I think we've, we've, we've danced the floor. I think we've answered pretty much all the questions, yep. haven't we? Yep. What's next for you guys? Where are you going from here? Back home? Right back to school and work? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we're going to stay tonight and head back home. Awesome. Well, safe travels. Thanks again so much yep. for coming. It's Thank been you. awesome meeting nice you guys. Nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you. Yep. Well, that's nice going to do it for this you. episode of In the Isles. Be sure to stay tuned. Check out Speed Bump Garage, Little Grip Garage, Vice Grip Garage, and of course, O'Reilly. Hit that button and bell so you don't miss awesome people like this. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. See you later.